<clears throat> so, more about how America's kind of the New World, New Netherlands, and um, Dutch. So, as my my family has been an establishing family for centuries and was part of one of the people involved with creating the golden age for the Dutch, one of the trading families, one of, I mean, not, there was only some though, and they've been all the way through America when they started the Republic here, and what I wanted to share was, okay, so we can go definitely to the Dutch, what has happened to the Dutch. Because regardless of what, for whatever reason, the Scots, the English, whoever, decided to teach American history the way they did in the schools, um, never teaching us about the Dutch, never teaching us about New York that way, and explaining that the Republic is because of the Dutch. And they won't even admit it. Um, Scottish people are, I don't trust them. I will not trust a Scottish person. Um, even the Irish, Irish are different about it. Uh, totally different. Depends if they're Protestant or Catholic, or urban country, whatever. They're kind of all a little bit different. But um, I don't trust the Scots that much. I mean, I meet Scottish people and everything, but it's like life according to the Scots. And why they did it in our, our country their Freemasonry and then now everybody of course there's people had got involved with their Freemasonry like Van Buren and he was a Dutch but uh, Roosevelt Theodore Roosevelt he became president before he was a Freemason so he but he was from one of the original uh, Dutch families of New York. And like my family. But um, my family had three people involved originally. And then, of course, they had kids. And then they had kids and kids. And the one person I had, he had ventured out from New York, was like... Virginia, then New Hampshire, and Iowa, and whatever. Um, so they were, uh, there was no need for Theodore Roosevelt to become a Freemason. He was early Dutch family, and um, what it had to do with the New Netherlands, the golden age of the Dutch, and um, their republic, way before the republic was a republic of America, they were a republic too, because the Dutch had one. And um, Van Buren, he was of the Dutch, and he was one of the front runners for um, the Democratic Republic before there was a Democrat Party. And we have two then they had the Democratic Republican, right? The Democratic Republic can party 
and the Whigs before the Republican Party. So they had the Democratic Republican Party, and then all of a sudden they just kept going, no, we're going full on Democrat. So they went on full on Democrat for a while, and um, we're getting extreme. So then they go ahead and go full on Republican and get extreme. And um, my family, Dutch, uh, were both Democrat. The two brothers who had come to the West, Luther and his brother had been to, so his brother went to Cal, they're both judges. His brother went to California, was a judge there, and started the first Orange Grove and the first store in the county where he was living, Fillmore. In the 1800s, but the state had been established. Now Oregon hadn't been established; was a territory still. And so Luther, he come, he was a judge. He came. Uh, he he had one of his employees thrown in prison for three days or jail for three days because he caught him drunk and disorderly. And the employee retaliated when he got out and burnt down the tobacco house and family owned. And um, that was kind of their main income because he was a wagon wheel maker and a judge and then had a tobacco house in his younger years. And then he moved to Oregon and uh, he was getting bigger. Then he got into the Congress and he had, his, of course, he bought his store and then he had, it's kind of different how he came to Oregon and others then people who came to California, like, they, like, ate each other on the way there. The Donner Party. And then, but he came to Oregon with, like, all his cattle and money and sold it, you know. He could have fed others. And I'm sure he probably didn't associate with people, like, because he was a judge. He was Christian Methodist. And, uh, so he was, I... Actually, the people who came to Oregon, I think, were probably mostly Methodists. It was like Methodist church people decided to come to Oregon because the Methodist missionaries had established the first community there. And most of early Oregon was Methodist, established for Methodist church people who decided to come to Oregon after their missionaries had come here. And um, so a little bit different than the Donner Party, going to California. <laughs> And the miners, a lot of, a lot of, it was like a mining rush there too, so. And then, um, yeah, so they didn't have to eat each other. They had like cat, their own cattle and all that for church going people. But Anyways, the brothers came, and he didn't go over the Donna party. He just went down there. He was a judge. He had his, started a store. He had his money. He sold all his things, and he uh, bought a, He had an orange grove planted. He became a judge there, and then, um, so that was how he, and in a store, and that's how he had his money. The very first store there in that county. Now there's a lot of oranges growing, I think, in that county, but more uh, I started growing like in L.A. and stuff. I think the first was like a nun or a monastery or something, a nunnery, the first orange growers in California. But he was the first in that county. And then... Um, but they had been establishing... They were Dutch, and I'm, there's no record of him being Freemason. He's buried in the Pioneer Cemetery, and he is, you know, Constitution, he was involved with writing. He did the first roads to go into the eastern part of our state, which is now the main Republican part of the state. And then that's where they had the logging companies. He started college with some other families, and um, oh, I got indigestion. So, he, 
then his sons, they got, like, they had the flour mill, and then he sold the logging road, got a, some of the logging companies, bought the logging road so he could build a canal. Somebody started a logging road, kind of a handoff, and then, because he built, he had prom promoted the first road could be built, and then they logged, and then they used that money so they had a flour mill to get crops. They, they built the canal from the road money, and then they had the flour mill, and ran, the canal ran right next to the flour mill. And then they, that was to get the farmer's crops, so that created income. That, they were created, just like the family had created income for the Dutch, New Netherlands with the trading company, the ships, the trading, they were doing that hundred years later, still doing that for getting the farmers month crops so they had money and it created any store. Of course, they had things to could buy their things with their money. And um, they had been doing that for hundreds of years and other Dutch families. And um, it's just been a handoff kind of, but it's it's been for some reason... The Dutch Republicans, the early Dutch Republicans, have been able to keep doing that. And my family was one. And um, what I'm saying it's all about is we are in such turmoil right now with our people wanting America to go away everything to go away everything to fail We're all upset jealous angry right but if you go examine the Dutch which is mainly Dutch who stayed Dutch that's our difference now our Republic has got all the different cultures because New York In that area, and the Dutch traders, or even why that happened, because they picked people up from all over their travels and brought them back to New York, to New Amsterdam, and they're, you know, so he's like, I get to see somebody, he's like, hey, I'll give you this money to take people over there to New Amsterdam, you know, from Scandinavia, or from Germany, or from France, or from India, or from Africa, or wherever, you know, wherever in their travels, and um, Portugal, Spain, wherever, I don't know, no, actually, the Dutch and the Spanish weren't really getting along too well, that was the whole reason they had a republic, was because of Spanish people, to keep them from having that Catholic monarchy over them, and... So, now, Dutch is doing, they're fine. The Republic, it's, it's, was hundreds of years, a couple hundred years before ours, and they're doing fine. They made it through Hitler, they made it through the Cold War with Russia, and, uh, whoever else, whatever else, France, all that. You know, Napoleon, everything. Um, they made it through England. And um, they managed to keep their republic. Well, now it's different. I don't know. But whatever it is, they were started this stuff. And America got its republic from that. And um, but do you think we're gonna disappear? I mean, the Dutch haven't. They go, oh, but Rome, yeah. But we weren't republic because of Rome. We were republic because of Netherlands, Dutch, and our our global trade and all that. You know, had to do with the Marshall Plan and stuff like that, but. Um, industrial boom, but 
Um, the Dutch had, that's how, it basically was New York, the Dutch, you know. That's where it all went down. So what's happening? Of course, they're economic warfare, psychological warfare, and their propaganda. Um, we're going through birth pains. A new nation. But it's a uh, Dutch Republic, you know. Not so Dutch, because the Dutch brought everybody else over here. And it's a little different. But, um, even the, the mobsters. So my my family had a mobster, and not my family, like like close family, like. But but an Elkins from the same early Dutch stuff, same origin, originally, was in Arizona. Moved up to Oregon after our family had been working on building up. The, the country, the Willamette Valley and the, the eastern part, central part of Oregon. And uh, some of the southern, I think, too. So, my family, you know, they'd been working on that. But, Stuff had been happening. They had a logging company. They had two logging companies. My grandfather's dad died when he was, my grandfather was only 10. And then they lost all that estate and all that stuff. And, um, logging company, everything. But they had, you know, his uncle, he still had a logging company. And, uh, But he, uh, so by the 1950s, my dad was a kid, teen or whatever. And that's when this guy from Arizona, it was a real big, tall Elkins. And, um, it's called Big Jim. And Big Jim Elkins, he comes up with his brother to, to Portland, Oregon. And there's families working there to establish there, right? But they had their city going. And, um... They had, uh, Their thing going there, but it wasn't as... I mean, it, there was corruption, but nothing like... What you see on the news now. With Portland, Oregon. How bad it is. Um... Here's how it started. My family, like they started this... The good had a bad gangster, early Dutch family, decided he's going to, the family's establishing things, but he's got other ideas. He's like going to be the asshole from a, from a different family to all the other families instead of like being the person that's a leader and helping them. So he's going to be the asshole and try what the Italian mobsters do. And he did it. And he was, like, the main gangster in Portland. So he goes there. He's involved with the teams that are used. It's like, got mafia guys trying to boss him around. They're, you know, like... And what he does, he gets all... He's, like, just total asshole. Everything that... So he gets the mayor, something on the mayor caught involved with prostitution... He gets the judge involved with prostitution. He gets the deputies involved with legal gambling. And then um, nobody in the city is going to do anything to him. He's clever. He did that. That's all it took. And then um, have you ever seen Dukes of Hazards with the boss hog? <laughs> like, so he used to guy. He gets the boss hog of Portland, and for all you know, <laughs> he's got him in his pocket, and uh, 
or her, yeah, I think there's a woman mayor too. I, so like he put a prostitution house right next to the mayor's office. And then um, this is the 50s and 60s. And then he gets hired to build the Coliseum in Portland. And they got the Teamsters and all these gangsters and mafia people. And he's doing all kinds of uh, corrupt things with money. And he gets off that scot free. And how he gets off things, okay, is. And he, he's. One of his main gigs was uh, robbing warehouses. So all these other families, they're building, you know, they're, they're got Everything anybody other family is doing, he's like robbing them like the Italians do, you know? So people are got this business going, they're so proud of their family and everything. And he's like got a heist going, he's gonna steal from them. He's that jerk from the, he was, you know, to be an Elkins, an asshole from a different family, he's from a Dutch establishing family. He's got them all in his pocket. Just, you know, everybody's trying to work on things and, uh, uphold law and everything and he's being a jerk from a different family and um, he's not even Italian and he's doing what they do and here's what he did he got every time he had a heist in the warehouse to so like a warehouse robbery he would have an Italian mob mafia person uh, go in on it he you know I got this warehouse I'm gonna be doing you want I need your help on this. <laughs> it's gonna be a million worth a million for you. Yeah, man. You read it off, Johnny. Oh, I'll do a million five. Okay, 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 I'll do it, man. You tell you guy gets it. You don't wrap me up, I'll kill you, man. And uh so and, it, and it, every time he did a heist, I mean, they didn't stop. They'd still do it. All he had to do is just keep telling me, you know, it's just going to be worth a million. And he, to get out of jail, he turned state's evidence and give him the name of the mafia guy, and then they let him out. Every time. And, and the mafia was dumb. I'm as clever and smart as all that's supposed to be. They, they, he got away with. They, there would always be this Italian guy that he could scapegoat, and um, you'd have to look up the history of Jim Elkins in Portland and Portland Confidential is one of the books that was written about. Him. Um, so he's got the Se Seattle Mafia Teamster leaders and all that stuff, pretty upset, wanting to make sure that. You know, he don't think he's getting away, and he's the boss. And <laughs> he's not an Italian or anything. He's just the Dutch Elkins, you know. His family was actually establishing family and upholding law and all that. And Christian. And they've been baptized all, all the way back, as far as I can see. The early traders were baptized, all that stuff. They found a baptism of at least a girl Elkins. And it was uh, back in the 1500s. So I don't know. I mean, it was real hard to trace very far back. Um, so. I'm just thinking. Who's who, what, you know, where, why, and when, and how. About our, what, how things got happened, because, you know, the ties went off. Destroyed Detroit. And, um, for a while, half the American money, this, see, the Dutch, did, did they do that? The Dutch are here. here. Um, it's pretty much their Dutch and whoever else built this country. These institutions were established by families. All their families are here. 
its trade was started. Somebody printed the first dollar bills press. Pressed the first dollar. Drew the marks on it. Somebody authorized it. Somebody organized it. Their families are here. But the Italians, they come over and have half our money, bank, uh, counterfeit money. Sicilians. Italians. Mafia. And the Roosevelt, a Dutch, he said, no, we need an FBI to take on these Italian people. And so they get rid of the Ku Klux Klan. Freak them out. They're freaking people out. That wasn't a Dutch thing. They, you know, every society and every race, every nationality has got its freaky people, but um, these are like gangster, man. So America's problem has been crime. But it's also been, you know, people, it's been a start from the very get-go. It's, you know, the Indians and the Dutch and the Indians and the English and the Indians... Everybody's fighting. The Indians are getting all, like, dying off from disease. Everybody else is fighting. 50% of people died off from disease. They just kept working on it. And uh, it turned into a very successful republic, just like the Dutch. And. Because it was fashioned after the Dutch. Not after Rome, after the Dutch. Not after Greece, after the Dutch. They had the Declaration of Independence, not the Rome. And um, they used the Republic. But the Dutch is like a watered down thing. You know, they came from the Dutch, not the Romans. The Dutch made a Republic because of the Roman Catholic. They wanted to do away with, they put the freedom of religion on it. And that's what America did. Because they do it, worked for the Dutch, and they were doing it for, so they did it for them. Well, the Dutch are still here. They're doing fine. Their economy's like one of the most advanced in the world. Except for, it's really not good to live in debt and. I guess the average person has like 30000 in debt. <laughs> they take an extra 30000 after their, or more than that. I mean, they, they take an, ex, when they get a mortgage on their home, they take an extra 30000 out for spending, for living expenses. I don't know, that they, they work their mortgages out that way, where they can get, the banks will give them 30000 more just to have once when they get their mortgage. <laughs> Which may be cool, I mean, because that's more money circulating. I don't know. But then, here's the bad to it. It creates a lot of stress to have to worry about all these bills. And the more bills, the more debt they have, the more stress, the more suicide, everything else. More tension. They don't have the racial tensions that we have. I don't think our republic's good. Our country's going to turn into this impoverished place, you know, and this complete collapse. It didn't happen to the Dutch. But we're a lot bigger country, and it's uh, a lot more going on because of it. But I, I mean, I just don't think it, I just don't see it folding. Boom, you know. We definitely have more problems than the Dutch, their economy, but maybe that's because we have people that don't want it to be like a real republic, like the Dutch. Maybe it's the rednecks. Maybe they want us to eat cow poop. 
I don't know. Well, that's a billion dollar industry, like cow poop. So maybe they feel like they're really how it all goes down. Really, was global trade. That's always been America's trademark. Before America was America, before the Scots and the English came here, it was it was the Dutch Golden Age trading globally. And that's what happened to America. And that's how we got so wealthy, was global trade. I don't know. The global trade, the problem with that, is the more global trading you're doing, the more conflict you have. So we got to figure out, you know, all this global trade, you know. Yes.